Welcome to another We Are The Seeds interview. I have a special guest today. Please introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Jacob Chier. I'm 24 years old. I'm from the Pueblo of Santa Clara, and I'm a musician. Nice. What, what instrument do you play for people who don't, who don't know I you? Play, uh, well, I play pretty much everything, but my main instrument is bass. I mean, sorry, my main instrument is guitar. <laughs> <laughs> but I also play the I also play the bass. I think I'm used to playing the bass, but because uh, I I also play with Levi Platero yeah. in the Levi Platero band. Yeah. And so I mean, sometimes I gotta fill in, play bass, and then. Yeah. Uh, but for him, I play rhythm guitar. I, I love I love the bass guitar. This this old musician, uh, not this old this old band I used to be in. He used to have an acoustic bass, and I I love that thing to death. It was an amazing instrument. Um. So what inspired you to pick guitar primarily? Um, I think mainly Guitar Hero. Growing up with like, nice. video games and playing Guitar Hero. Did you uh, Did you have a specific favorite song on there? Uh, One no. that was like, "I need to play this. I need to learn how to play this." I think. Well, I think for me, I think the main video game was Guitar Hero Two. I think that one. Mm. I think. I was maybe like in sixth grade or something and I think it came out and I remember all my friends had it. And so I, th I would say that specific game, but I think that one was the best because it has my favorite band or one of my favorite bands has a Stray cat song on there. Rock this oh, town. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, I think growing up with that, like mm -hmm. wanting to like pl actually play those songs in real life kind of inspired me to pick up guitar, but also having other friends who played guitar or played instruments um, kind of pushed me to learn yeah it's amazing how like groups of friends because it's kind of the same thing with me like my friends were in a band and they were like hey you should try being in a band and I was like sure why not and then I, I fell in love with music I really did um, so how long how long have you been playing uh, well I mean officially I've been playing for about well I started playing um, my junior year of high school so I would say about eight, nine years ago, I've been playing. Uh, well, that's when I actually started playing the guitar. But actually, I guess actually being in a band and performing probably the past six years or so. I had a high school band, we're a little pop rock band. Nice. So uh, <laughs> yeah, just having that kind of, and then I guess, which is cool thing about that band is that one of the main guys from that band, his dad is like a Northern New Mexican uh, musician kind of big in the like northern New Mexico scene and so he helped us out a lot he has a recording studio so we recorded like a little three song demo for this battle of the bands radio contest and that's kind of how we started becoming the band and then after that got out of high school went into college uh, I did jazz studies at northern New oh. Mexico College Dude, so awesome. um, so because of jazz studies like we we're like yeah my college friends we like let's set he said let's start a band so we started like this jazz yeah. blues fusion <laughs> rock band dude and that's, then uh, that's a good mix that's a good mix and then i started doing my own thing kind of did like the like bedroom pop kind of mm -hmm. lo-fi kind of stuff and then uh, i joined levi's band about a year ago what what led up to you? Because I've I've known you for a couple of years. I think we've really started talking most recently uh, because of We Are the Seeds, um, and seeing you growing up and hearing your music change. What is the mind frame that from your music to working with Levi's Levi Patero's music? Is there two different mind frames? Like, what is the difference between your music and his music? I guess what the difference for me. When I'm playing in his band, he's the star kind of yeah. thing. So, I mean, I feel like I have to be there as a musician to help him mm -hmm. kind of grow. And uh, especially like doing solos and uh, when he's like shining is, right, yeah. is when I have to like, okay, I need to bring it down. I need to play these chords or I need to do this. And I think that's what like the jazz, those yeah. jazz studies help because I can do different voicings on my guitar and like help him kind of shine i guess that's a very good skill to have uh, the ability to listen to other musicians I, i've worked with a lot of musicians and a lot of them don't have that unfortunately because it's like no i'm jamming everybody's yeah. listening to me so or, <laughs> working together is really important or yeah or having that uh, yeah because i worked with other musicians too where they're like oh my volume needs to be at a constant 10 no, all no. the time and you're like no man you need to bring, <laughs> bring it down listen to everybody but i think yeah. that's what helped going to school for that jazz is 
having well my guitar teacher he was a brazilian dude and he played like wow. brazilian uh jazz and classical and mm. he was a crazy dude but he would always tell us he'd be like use your knobs use your knobs yeah. man and so i think having that constant reminder just yeah. was uh helped out a lot but i guess like the difference also is that when i'm in levi's band i know he's the star i know mm. he's it doesn't say like Jacob Shihei band. Yes. It yes. says Levi Platero band. So I have to be there to help him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it's my time to shine, I guess when it's like Jacob Shihei is performing, then my mindset is I need to be like, I need to be the star and I yeah. need to show off. Kind of, I need to show off a little bit what I can do, but also like, I want people to know what kind of music I play, like how I sound. And I mean, I don't like, I guess like I don't want to like brag, but I'd be like, okay, I'm like good enough to yeah. be playing with some people, so I need to like show off that that I can that I actually can play because I think that's another thing too about being kind of fairly young, is that people expect me to like not know certain yeah. things or not know. Um, you don't know your keys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so I, uh, it was funny. So late uh, recently, there's in the there's a blues jam here in Santa Fe. Mm. Uh, or there was i guess because of quarantine but <laughs> but there was this blues jam and uh i kind of started branching out and i was like you know what if i want to do this as a musician and be my own musician i need to go out and kind of explore meet new people kind of network out there right yeah. and so i went to this blues jam in, in santa fe and uh yeah same thing people were like who's this kid playing yeah. guitar and they wouldn't like tell me the key. So having that jazz knowledge is like, okay, I can hear it. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me figure it out. I can figure out where we are or like, I can jam and solo over this. Like I can do it. So after that, they were like, okay, you're all right. Go ahead and come back next week or come back in two weeks and play again. And that's awesome. It's always interesting. Like one of my favorite things to do um, is to go to open mic nights and just because there's a lot of ego there you can feel it it's interesting (laughs) and it doesn't like there's some great places i've been to where people are laid back but it's still there like oh this guy's up next let's see what he does yeah and then there's this interesting respect that becomes when you perform and then there's two groups of people who are like that was amazing you know who are you what do you do and then the other ones just kind of stay in the back and there's nothing wrong with that it's just part of the industry this just people Mm -hmm. being people um but uh, back to the interview, the the rawness. The, I, I've been getting into jazz lately, um, and it's interesting because I went from like I went from metal to classical to blues, which led me to jazz. And the one thing I've carried over through all of them is the rawness, mm-hmm. just the, the ability to adapt to these different sounds yet combine them all together. And um, when it comes to jazz. Was there like a specific musician that comes to mind that that that, that you kind of emulate that you wish you could emulate? Like, cause me, I, I listen to Miles mm. Davis, and I'm like, oh man, I want that sound. Uh, is there like styles, a specific style within that jazz that really connects with you that you bring to your music and other people's music? Uh, I guess for me, it would be George Benson. Oh. Like for me, George Benson's the George Benson's the man. Like, um, well, I mean, real quick, going back to what you're saying about like how jazz kind of carries over, right? Um, another thing that I learned from my teacher was that like jazz is the basis of like well, all music, basically. Oh, like yeah. jazz is you like if you learn jazz, you can play anything. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's, is what he told us. It's true. It's true. And so I think having like that knowledge was good <laughs> i mean what i do now blues and pop yeah. and having like those different chords and it's cool how it branches out into those things so you can just tap into it and like oh i know what i'm doing yeah, yeah, yeah. learn jazz people just, yeah. just learn your chords they're amazing jazz jazz just jazz that's it that's all yeah, you gotta just, know just, just do jazz. some jazz <laughs> but uh yeah i would say george benson would be is a guy for me like in the jazz scene george benson's a man like i guess what he was like a jazz musician when his younger days and then kind of towards 70s 80s is when he started doing like the dancey yeah. uh what is it what's the song give you the night and uh, the night. right yeah so i guess and then crazy i guess not crazy but in college i had my guitar teacher and my vocal 
uh, teacher tell me like, you remind me of George Benson. Like, oh, wow. That's I guess having, I guess having, well, I guess mainly just the sense that like he was this jazz musician, but he took his jazz knowledge and turned it into like pop and mm -hmm. something that people could dance to. And so that's what they were always like, you got to be like George Benson, like use your jazz knowledge in your pop music. Yeah. yeah. Or, um, Another thing too is that I've always wanted to learn and I'm still trying to do it, but uh, George Benson like scats and plays at the same time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's, that's insane. I don't get how he does that, but that's my, <laughs> that's my goal. That's one of my goals in life to do it's like scat and play. There's, there's a, a cover song I've been learning um, and it, it, it makes you do uh, beatboxing while playing piano. Mm -hmm. And the piano part is, it's pretty complex. And so me trying to beatbox over it, it's just been, oh man, it's, it's, it's amazing. You can sing and perform all this time, but at the moment you put a new element into it, like beatboxing, which I've never mm -hmm. done before, it just completely shatters and you just get to reassemble it. And that's one of the reasons I love being an artist and musician is you're constantly remolding yourself. Right. And with you placing many eggs in many baskets, that's really a very smart thing to do mm. as a musician uh, where you have your stuff and you have Levi Patero right. and you bring a uniqueness to each and it causes you to wear different masks. And these different masks allow you in life to grow and adapt easily. Right. Yeah. It gives you courage. Um, yeah. I think that, I think that's always been like one of the main things for me as a musician is learning different styles of music or learning different genres and I guess adapting to those different situations yeah. of, um, I mean, being in a pop rock band, it's just the simple <laughs> bar chords and then moving from jazz and then now to blues. And then I've also played with uh, In a State a few times. So uh -huh. like adapting to that reggae yeah. feel, but also yeah, yeah. that, that, and then doing like the little, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, the little like picks in between. Mm -hmm start some stuff or i mean it, but i think that's just my goal is learning to adapt to different styles and genres of music and figuring out like where how to combine them all i guess mm -hmm. it's god yeah i mean you're young and it's going to be cool to see that grow as you continue to add and add um but uh is there any advice you have for young native american musicians that are picking up the guitar the bass guitar for the first time getting into jazz the first time is there any advice you have for them that you've experienced in your musical career that you wish you could tell yourself i practice as much as you can for sure i think <laughs> practice makes perfect pra i mean there's no maybe no such thing as perfect but i would say practice wow. as much as you can and I think as I'm getting older, I'm starting to realize that like maybe I should have practiced this much or maybe I should have, yeah, maybe I should have, instead of going out or doing yeah. something with my friends, maybe I should have stayed home and practice. Or um, even now, I mean, as I'm getting older, I'm like trying to find that time to practice also. Yeah. But also I think, um, so I do these career days at my old high school and some, sometimes the kids will be like, how do you, how do you do it? And I'm like, you just got to learn. Like, I yeah. think you just go, you just go for it. I think just that's really, it. you just go, you just, you're like, all right, I want to be a musician. Just go for it. Like practice. Um, what's, what is it? Like, uh, yeah, practice. Like, uh, I'm trying to figure out the word. I can't like, figure it out right like, now. Like but. for me, it's like, I've, I've failed so much in my life but i've succeeded because i failed it's, mm. it's just those little stepping stones and it's one of the things about um with all the musicians i've been interviewing practice like everybody right. always asks what is the secret practice just right. focus practice that, that is the trick yeah or another thing too is uh don't be afraid to fail i think oh, that's yeah. another, i think that's a big one yeah. is i mean you're I've, i'm learning that now is that you're always going to get somebody who's better or you're going to know somebody who's way better than you yep. and then you're like oh man i want to be as good as they are or like and then same thing practice so you can be as good as them mm -hmm. I think I get that a lot too. Being in Levi's band is that people, I'm like, oh man, Levi's so good. Like I'm playing with all these badass musicians and uh -huh. like, they're so good. And I get a lot of people who are like, well, practice so you can become better than them. Yeah. And so I think that's a lot of the mindset that I have too, is like be better than 
them or something like that. Yeah. Not like not like in a mean way, but I mean as no. in like a, like so you can keep up with them kind of thing. It, it's it's a friendly kind of spiritual competition. Um, always surround yourself with artists and musicians who have the same mindset because there there is a lot of ego out there. Um, so having yourself in such a group in a band that allows yourself to compete with one another is, is, a, is a great thing. It's a yeah. learning experience because you, you have no choice but to grow. And that's a great right. thing. Right. And then I've also read too, like, or people have said, like play with people who are better than you. Yep. So that can like teach you how to grow and uh, get as good. Yeah. And then, yeah, like we were saying, don't like, don't be afraid to fail. I think that's, there's a lot of, uh, I think a lot of people like get, like turned down by maybe like venues or turned down by certain i don't know yeah vans booking agents whatever that like i don't know i think that too like uh you could reach out to what 20 people and all 19 of them say no but this one person who yeah. says yes can lead you to another gig or and like lead you to somebody else kind of thing yeah. It, it, it's so tricky not to take it personal when they say no. And, but yeah. that's something you just got to learn it. And it makes your skin thicker too, is mm -hmm. people saying no to you. Like why just, you know, keep practicing, just yeah. keep your head up, keep practicing, feel bad, then, but get over it. Yeah. And then another thing too, is that like, I think like now we're dealing with social media. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, I follow a lot of social media. What are they like? Um, what are they like social media pages uh groups. In, in like influence rich uh -huh. social media influencers and some of them say like um like if you know your content's good put it out just or like just put out as much content as uh -huh. you can on social media post like if you're good you're if you're basically if you're good you're good and people will take rec uh, notice of you yeah, it's it's like a full time job, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Or yeah. even like thinking about like you're like I always think about my next post. Like, what shall I, <laughs> what what shall I create next for Instagram, or what shall I create next for Facebook, yeah. or something like that, so I can post it and like hopefully people will share it. Mm -hmm. But then I guess same thing too. Of when you, I feel like for myself when I spend a lot of time creating a video or creating something and it doesn't get that much views or get that much likes, then you're like, oh man, maybe I did something wrong. Yeah. But, but I think a lot of it too, it's just like, all right, on to the next one. Like you yes. did it, leave it yeah. behind you onto I, the next video I, or song or whatever. I know that battle all too well, man. It's <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just keep doing it. Keep creating. Um, those doors do start opening. It's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and don't yeah. take it personal. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, Thank you, Jacob. It was a great interview. For sure. um, yeah. And you have yourself a great day. And we'll, we'll talk again at some point. And I'm sure I'll see you when this is all over again on some yeah, stage sure. somewhere. Yeah. Well, uh, what did you, what was your dream? <laughs> we were playing where? Oh, <laughs> so I, ha I had this dream. I, we, I was in Pagosa and we were at a Dairy Queen. I don't think there's a Dairy Queen in Pagosa. And I grew up on that, in that part of uh, Colorado and New Mexico. And I was inside and they were like, oh, you're here, you're here. All these people were so happy. And I'm like, what are you talking, what am I doing here? And then you showed up and you were like, oh, you made it, Zach. And you like, gave me a hug. And you're like, it's sold out, dude. Everybody's going to love our show. It was hilarious, man. It was great. Um, but uh, huh. we'll wrap up. So where can people find you know, some information about you on uh, the socials? So you can find me on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Jacob Shihei Music. Uh, again, Shihei, Jacob Shihei, S-H-I-J-E, for those who don't know how to spell it. I'll, I'll put uh, a link in the description too. Okay, cool. Uh, Instagram, at Jacob Shihei. Uh, Twitter, uh, actually, I changed it recently, but if you just search <laughs> Jacob Shihei, Twitter. it'll pop up. Yeah, um, I use Twitter sometimes. It's kind of huh. funny. Uh, what else am I on? I'm on SoundCloud. Same thing, soundcloud.com slash Jacob Shihei. Um, and that's about it. All right. Well, th well, thanks, bud. Uh, again, yeah, thank you so much. Sure. It's good to yeah. see you. Uh, that ends another interview with We Are The Seats. Thank you for joining us. You have a good day. All right.